make poverty as painful as possible to get to prosperity quicker. You're worth it. What's up, y'all? My name is Liberty V. Justice, and there's no period in my V because my victories never end, and I'm here to help you get your victories, legends. I'm trying to be a living legend, okay? So, again, yes, my name is Liberty V. Justice, and actually, I could... I can show you my ID. I changed my name because Christ freed me. And the only freedom, the last freedom I need is the financial freedom. So thanks for all your support, mom. Thanks for sending me money and supporting my business. And my mom sends me, she bought my NFT. She sponsored the channel. And man, my mom is really my only friend besides me and Jesus. Me, Jesus, and my mom are my only friends because we're the only ones that have been here the whole time with me. So thank you, mama. And I changed my name, like I said, because Christ freed me. Yes, it's all like a Bible. See that? So, anyway, make poverty as painful as possible. I call it poverty's prison, right? Because it's like, um, poverty is a prison, you know? And it's a trap. And, but theoretically, you know, we're not supposed... Number one, this is not theoretical. We are not supposed to be poor, okay? Being poor is a sin. Why? Because what does sin mean? Number one, you're going against yourself. So I was going against myself for so long and I was so selfish, only thinking of what can I take right now versus what can I give, right? So I was so selfish uh, because I didn't like myself. Is it, isn't it ironic? People say you only think about yourself, about wealthy people. Wealthy people only think about themselves. They did things the wrong way. When in reality, it's poor people that only think about themselves. Because when you're poor, you're so miserable, you can't possibly think about another person. And I'm not saying giving them money, but you, you can't support people because you don't support yourself. You don't like yourself. You only think about what can you get from someone else, okay? So whether it's a job or whatever, it doesn't matter. So it's a sin, number one. And then uh, number two, we're not supposed to be poor. And, well, that was actually the first point. It, it, we're not supposed to be poor. It's a sin. And we created jobs. We created all these things, man-made pills, man-made jobs, man, man made all of the circumstances that you see today. Man made COVID, man made the vaccine, man made the pandemic, man makes shortages, man makes goods. Man does all this stuff. Man makes plants, man, yeah, man makes marijuana. God put marijuana here, but not for us to smoke. You know, not for us to get high. He doesn't want us to be out of our minds. God doesn't get high, right? But the point is this. We made things the way that they are today. I make my own economy, okay? So check it out. I plan on being a billionaire. You're watching history in the making, baby, because you're going to see me on my private jet. Me and my mom, we're going to be making videos. And I know she don't like mom. I know you don't like to be on videos. You will be on the video. You will do what I say, mom, because I'm a billionaire, okay? So, <laughs> I'm like a little kid, though. I'll, I'll just bug her until she does it. I remember that. I just keep asking until she gives me what I want, okay? That's what I did as a kid. I'm, uh, I don't want to do it now because she gets mad. But anyway, so I will do it when I'm a billionaire, though, because I could do it. I'll just give her some money. Mom, get on a video. Here's a million dollars. Okay, <laughs> right? But poverty's prison. It's a prison because you're stuck. You know, you're trapped. You can't go anywhere. What do you, I mean, uh, you have no money. Where are you going to go, right? You have no money. You can't get on a private jet. You have no money. You can't, I don't have enough money to go visit my family if I wanted to right now, which would be cool because it would, I'm not complaining. I love the heat, but this would be a perfect time. I always go visit my family in the wintertime because of Christmas and, you know, birthdays and whatnot. My mom's birthday's in January, but, but it would be nice to see my mom maybe on Mother's Day one day, but I don't have the money. And I love to be here because it's much warmer in California. But I, well, the point is you don't have money, you know, when you don't have money, you're a prisoner. And when you don't have money, uh, sometimes people feel like they should just do whatever they have to do to get money. I don't believe that. They go get a job. I don't believe that because I believe it's a sin because I was, I actually had a job for one month from right after my birthday in November of 2021 until December of 2021. I had a job for one month. It was exactly one month. And, um, I felt every, the night before I started the job, I had nightmares 
and no no joke like i'm not even i'm not being exact exaggerating uh because i hate jobs and i love my own business i'm worth it incorporated i don't like giving up on myself i don't like saying oh i'm gonna lose 30 pounds but then i gained 30 pounds instead which is exactly what happened too so i gave up and then when you start losing in one area of your life Every other area crumbles. Now, now I'm happy because now I'm, I weigh like what 107, 100, or I'm sorry, 117. But uh, I'm happy and I could lose more. I just want a flat stomach and I want to feel energetic and all that stuff. And I want my brain to work. That's why I need to be a certain way. I love the way I look, yes. But that's not the that's not the only. If that was the only reason, and I felt like shit and my mental health was bad, then I would you know not want to be that weight, right? But anyway, so. Uh, it's a prison. When you don't have money, you have to depend on other people. You have to. Sometimes I beg m money from my mom. She don't have it. That makes her feel bad. I don't want you to feel bad, mom. I don't. You know. Uh, I don't even like asking her for money, and I don't like telling her my situation. Oh, mom, I, I ran out of money for food. I don't like that because I know it makes my mom feel bad. But it's mom. It's not your responsibility to feed me, and it's not your responsibility to clothe me. I'm 43 years old, and the truth is, I should have just started a long time ago. That I don't have any. Regret. I'm not sorry. I'll never be sorry because my middle name is literally the opposite of victim. My middle name is victorious. So and between victorious, I, I couldn't pick between two things. Victorious, which means always in victory. Opposite of your, if you're a victor, you're not a victim, right? It's in my control. And then the other thing is my great grandma. Her name was Virginia. And so, but I don't want to name myself Virginia. I just put a V because Virginia and Victorious, okay? So, uh, like one of our presidents, Lyndon B. Johnson, he has two middle names. But anyway, oh, and by the way, I'm not going to be a politician or, or, a pre or the, I'm not the president or any type of politician. But the point is, when, you're, when you have no money, uh, it, it increases your dependence on other people and situations. You feel like you can't, you're trapped, you can't get out. So, the reason why I got this uh trailer camper thing whatever i packed a lot of my stuff up because right now uh uh they they said they said they're gonna um i'm trying to be quiet they hear me they're gonna do it right now but they they um uh, basically marked my camper my rv and they said they're gonna tow me away so i didn't talk to them but they told us if we get marked tires i gotta move so i'm worried about that a little bit but i'm just working and said, I'm prepared. I got all my stuff packed, throw my shit out, bug out bags, mom. Uh, but this is the point that I'm making is that I'm doing this and I'm, well, I'm doing it for me so I can become victorious and help you. Um, I don't need it to be this hard, but I like it to be hard. I love a challenge, right? Um, but I've already overcome so many things, but the point is that I, everything that I do, whether if it's on camera or video or even on a one-on-one -on -one text or a one-on-one -on -one conversation, if nobody ever hears it, the reason why I do this is for you, for whoever's listening or watching this, because I want you to know that you're infinite in value. That means there's no amount of money that's enough to for you because you're a human soul, you're a life, and, and God gave us this life, and you, YOLO, you only get one life, so... Why not live it to the best, like the maximum of your potential, which by the way, you'll never know your full potential until you get into a situation like this and you realize, oh, oh I can't depend on anybody else. I got to be self-sufficient because what if nobody shows up? What if people don't, people, you know, that happens all the time. The bus doesn't come. They, you wait an hour and then the next one comes and you're like, what happened? Oh, the person didn't show up for work. So, but I show up. I show up, man. I'm so proud of myself. So I, the point, the premise of this whole episode and this whole, um, my whole life is that make poverty as painful as possible uh, because poverty is a prison. So you, what do you do when you're in prison? You, you, you're on your best behavior, that best behavior. You learn, you read, you research, you write, you spend all your time alone pretty much. And whenever you are with another person, you're grateful for the person that's really good to you. And, uh, you, you, you treat them extra special, better than most people. That's how I treat my mom. My mom's like, I wouldn't say the warden, but that doesn't sound right, but it, it goes with the metaphor. But my mom's the only person that really has supported me this whole time. And, uh, it upsets her to see me like this, but I'm happy, mom. I'm happy because I'm not, I'm coming out COVID-19 gun smoking. I'm the winner. 
Like, I, I listen to my song. It's called The Renegade. I'm the renegade. I made that song. Well, I wrote the song during COVID-19, during the lockdown while I was homeless. And I'm, you know, I'm not homeless now, technically, but still, you know, I'm going to win. I, because the only way to win is if you just don't give up. So I'm on my best behavior. Um, when you're in prison, what do you do? You learn. You, you think a lot. You write a lot of stuff down. You might write letters to people, which I do write letters. Uh, I text people because I want to make sure people know that I still care about them. Uh, and I do, and I just work. That's what I do. I work. I make YouTube content. I make my TikToks. I do live streams. I have, have an NFT now. I'm blessed for that because of TikTok. I have almost 200,000 fans. And this company, Believe in David, shout out. He gave me a free NFT. I get 85%. So I sell it right now for $9.99. And it's a trading card of me in my picture, um, as a, I'll just show it to you. In my Halloween costume, when I first started TikTok, uh, I wore this this costume, uh, Wonder Woman, and that's my trading card. Well, of course, it's, uh, and that's my brother. Love you, bro. Love you, Riley. Love you, Mom. And so, happy birthday, Zane Belated. But anyway, um, I wore that costume, and they cropped it out, and that's my NFT trading card online. You got six different colors. But then also, um... You get with it, you get a five-minute FaceTime with me. There's so many things that I'm doing. Uh, I Honestly, I can't do it alone, but there's only a few people that actually really, really care about my success. And really, I can the only one I can prove that really cares about me and wanting me to reach my goals is my mom. So, love you, mama. Thank you. And, of course, Jesus Christ and my grandma's watching. She's happy. She's proud of me. My grandma understands what I'm going through more than anybody, I think, because, like, my mom is always scared uh, she thinks things are gonna happen to me or something. I, I don't know. But I'm gonna win, mom. I'm not a victim. I'm not sorry. I'm never gonna apologize for all this stuff that I go. Am I gonna be on my private jet? Mom, I'm so sorry that I was homeless for so long. No! No, I'm not. Is, are you gonna apologize when I'm on my jet? Oh, Liberty, I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. No, of course not. We're not gonna even talk about it. If we do, we'll just be laughing at all the idiots who did who who didn't support me and supports free. But now I don't text people, I don't call people, I don't DM because people are gonna have to buy my NFT because nine ninety nine is nothing. Next month, June first, it's going up to fifty dollars. I'm worth it. And I, I'm not going to bend on this. I'm not going live. And I'm not sending any DMs to people on any platforms. And I'm not wasting any time on texts or phone calls with people that don't believe that I'm worth it. I know that you don't think that you're worth it. $10 is nothing. And I get $8.50 from that. But just because you think that you're worthless, that doesn't mean that I have to spend my time trying to convince you. Because if I spend my time time trying to convince you that you are infinite in value, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to lose my value. I'm not going to be happy. And you're going to feel a little bit better for the moment, but you're still going to get rewarded for your bad behavior. And I'm not going to encourage you and reward you for your bad behavior, which is selling out, getting a job, wasting time, all of those things. You have money. I know that you have money because I know what you spend it on and you don't give me any of it. And to me, that is not a friend. You don't spend time on my YouTube channel. You don't watch my podcast. Uh, listen or watch my podcast. I have that one on Spotify now, too, that's also a video podcast. You have not put in any of the work for this. Therefore, you don't get the rewards. And I am the reward, okay? Part of the reward. The other part of it is becoming a billionaire, having money. I have uh, over in Africa, I already have... Um, a uh, non-profit in Kenya. So I'm going to Kenya one day. Nakapenda sana. Love you guys. Dr. Felix, Dr. John Paul. Thank you guys. Love you so much. So we're going to help people with AIDS over in Africa and help try. My point is I want to prevent it. So we're educating kids over there about sex education and stuff. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make poverty as painful as possible. And then that way you can get out of it quicker. Okay. Because this pandemic was not punishment. It was the... It was my FTX for prosperity. It was my field training for wealth. So the, I don't have any apologies. I'm the winner. Okay? So pay the price now. That's the point. Pay whatever price that you have to pay now so that you can pay any price later. These are my prices. Sleeping outdoors, sleeping in this RV, all the things that I go through. People's bad attitudes when I'm paying them and I no longer pay them. I'm going to a different store. I am worth it. Pay the price now so that later you can pay any price. Billionaire best wife out, baby. I am worth it. Thank you so much. Share this with a friend. Review us in Apple Podcasts and 
Buy our NFT. Buy our Thrive products. Buy the things on Amazon you're already buying. It's down below. Share this with a friend. You are worth it. My name is Liberty V Justice. There's no period in my V because my victories never end. And I'm here to help you get your victories, legends.